Welcome back. So now we want to look at an ideal Bose gas. If we look at an ideal Fermi gas and now we want to look at an ideal Bose gas. Recall that the variable eta takes a value plus 1 for a Bose gas and for a gas which is made up of bosons and for bosons the wave function that we have are symmetric wave functions. Not only that, in the Fermi gas, we saw that Nk <coughs> is restricted to be either 0 or 1, which is essentially the Pauli exclusion principle that states that not two, more than one particle can have the same quantum number, which means not more than one particle can occupy the same single particle level. Bose gas, bosons do not have these restrictions and therefore these have some interesting implications as we will see later on when we go further into this. <coughs> Most importantly, you can see that since they do not have these restrictions, more than one particle can come to a, occupy the single particle level. And therefore, it becomes interesting that as you keep on decreasing the temperature, the zero energy state is very, very special where you will see that all the particles go and sit over there. <coughs> but this is what is called uh, Bose-Einstein condensation but this is not really a condensation in a real space. It's a condensation in the momentum space. We will look at that later on. <coughs> right now, our starting point is the grand canonical partition function, which we had written down and which simply is minus k ln 1 minus z e to the power minus beta epsa k. Now, the particle number <coughs> if you recall, was sum over nk. And the average value of nk is del del beta epsa k minus of ln q plus. And if I do this, I take this derivative, then essentially I am taking the derivative with respect to one energy level. And therefore, in the whole sum that you see in this, ln q plus only one energy level will be picked up which means you are going to have 1 minus z e to the power minus beta epsa k <coughs> then minus z e to the power minus beta epsa k and then del beta epsa k of minus beta epsa k so that gives you z e to the power minus beta epsa k divided by z sorry, 1 minus z e to the power minus beta epsa k, 1 minus z e to the power minus beta epsa k, so that you come up with the expectation value in k is equal to 1 over z inverse e to the power minus beta epsa k minus 1. And this expression then takes the form <coughs> n is sum over k 1 over e to the power minus beta epsa k minus mu minus 1 right now clearly you know <coughs> that the restriction is n k is greater than 0 less than equal, equal to the total particle number and it follows that if I look at this, now since I have this restriction that the occupation number in an energy level must be greater than e 0, less than e equal to n, right? It cannot be more than n, of course, because you have a total of n number of particles. This effectively means, if you look at this expression carefully, this effectively means that epsa k minus and this means that mu must be less than epsilon k. But this is true for any energy value. So, what should be the restriction on mu then? Then one has to look at the energy levels and look at the lowest bound of this. And the lowest bound of this corresponds to epsa k is equal to 0, the zero momentum state, because these are free particles, right? So, I know that epsa k is equal to h squared k squared over twice m. Right? 
So therefore, it follows that since this restriction must be valid for any of the energy levels that I am considering, it must be also valid for the lowest energy level which is mu epsi k equal to 0. Therefore, it follows that for a Bose gas, mu is less than 0. The chemical potential of a Bose gas is less, always less than 0. Which means that the fugacity must be greater than equal to 0, less than equal to 1. Now, this mu less than 0 is essentially it's a reflection of the fact that the bosons feel an attractive potential. When we did the canonical formalism with bosons, we saw that the pair interaction was attractive, right? So, it is simply statement of the fact that the chemical potential is less than zero and adding more and more bosons to the ground state does not cost you any more energy, right? Now, how do we proceed? Well, the idea is simple. We have done it several times. So, what we write down is we replace the sum. We assume that we have a thermodynamic system. which means it's a macroscopic system with a large enough box length so that my energy eigenvalues epsa goes as 1 over L, sorry uh, the moons the discrete k modes that we saw that k n is 2 pi n over l it goes as l 1 over l <coughs> and consequently all the energy spectrum looks a continuous spectrum so that the discrete sum over k which is this can now be replaced by a continuous sum which we did for the fermionic system when we looked at ideal fermi gas and that goes as d cube of k now here I want to, we did it in the Fermi, uh, for an ideal Fermi gas, we want to write down in a slightly different way. V, there has to be a G factor over here that comes from the degeneracy, the internal degeneracy, internal degrees of freedom. 2 pi whole cube times GV, this becomes 4 pi k square dk. But h square k square is twice m, uh, sorry, h square k square by twice m is epsilon. So it follows that twice k dk is twice m over h bar square d epsilon. And the first equation also implies that k is twice m epsilon over h bar square raised to the power half. So I have gv over 2 pi whole cube 4 pi and then i take a 2 divided by 2 and multiply it by 2 so that this becomes 2 pi and i have k 2k dk 2k dk is straightforward twice m over h bar square d epsa and this is straightforward twice m over h bar square half times epsa half and then you have the integral gv over 2 pi whole cube times 2 pi. <coughs> so all the constants come outside the integral so that I have gv over 2 pi whole square and then I have twice m raised to the power 3 by 2 and I have h bar whole q, right? <coughs> Integral epsa half d epsa. This is further, it can be simplified by noting that h bar is h over 2 pi so that I have a 2 pi whole q and this is 2 pi whole square times 2m raised to the power 3 bar half 
divided by h cube integral epsilon half d epsilon so that this sum over k now goes to 2 pi gv over h cube times 2m 3 half integral epsilon half d epsilon. The reason I wanted to take this particular approach is that you will see that both of them are equivalent <coughs> but because I wanted to highlight something over here. Now this I can write down g epsilon d epsilon where g epsilon is the energy is the density of state which means the number of energy levels line between epsilon and epsilon plus d epsilon is g epsilon d epsilon and for this particular case this is going to be we'll just write down this as epsilon to the power half it is very interesting that this quantity depends on the dimension of dimensionality of space please note that where does it come in it comes in over here i have a three dimensional system therefore i have taken d cube k if you had taken two dimensional system you would have d to k which would mean that this is k dk and if it is k dk you immediately see that g epsilon is constant because half k sorry not half k dk because just go back over here this part when you had for a two dimensional system I'm not worried about the constant factor, but I'm just worried about the one which is under the integral. You would have k dk, which you can write some constant times. Let's call the constant as c k dk, which is nothing but c by 2 d epsilon. 2 k dk, and this is d epsilon, and therefore it follows that g epsilon is going to be constant for when you're looking at a Bose gas or when you're looking at a free particle gas whether it's a fermionic system or a bosonic system the density of state is constant in 2d in 1d <coughs> this is just going to be dk right the sum over k will just go over to some constant times dk and dk If you look at the relation between the energy and the momentum, I have dk going as d epsilon by k. So that this integral will go as integration d epsilon over k. Some constant factor is always there outside, but that is not something which you have to worry about too much. But the idea is now k goes as epsilon to the power half so that your g epsilon goes as epsilon to the power minus half what is interesting to note that here the density of states the number of energy states g epsilon at epsilon equal to zero is zero in three dimension there are no energy levels at this particular energy that's what my density of states tell me in contrast if you go to the two dimensional case then you see that all throughout the energy spectrum you have a constant number of energy density of energies so wherever you consider your epsa to be whether it is between zero and uh, d epsa or it is epsa and epsa plus d epsa the number of energy states are the same in contrast for a one dimensional system 1d system the number of density number of energy levels 
here epsilon epsi equal to 0 diverges. That is very interesting. So, we will see what does it mean later on when we look, look at Bose-Einstein condensation. Coming back to this now, <coughs> I have sigma over k that goes to integration of g epsa d epsa with g epsa given by g v twice pi g v over h cube twice m raised to the power 3 half epsa to the power half, right. <coughs> but note that even I am considering that my system is macroscopic so that energy levels are continuous. In reality, this is not the case because you still have Kn scaling with as 1 by L. So, you have a very tiny, tiny uh, difference between the two energy levels. But epsa k at k equal to 0 is 0. So, there is exactly one energy level which is there at the 0 at the 0 momentum state. But this clearly does not seem to be the case which we have already highlighted out. While going from this to this, we clearly see that there is a problem because g epsa goes to epsa to the power half. The discrete case, when we look really at the discrete case, we see that even at k equal to 0, the 0 momentum state, there is one energy level. But the moment we replace this sum by a continuous integral over the density of state, we see that at epsilon equal to 0, there is no energy level because g epsa is 0 as epsa tends to 0. So, therefore, we have to be a little bit more careful in our analysis. So, what we have to do is we have to separate out the zero energy level, the zero momentum vector which we do it over here. We look at this expression over here and then we see that I can write down this uh, sum as ln q plus as minus sum over k ln 1 minus z e to the power minus beta epsilon k minus g ln of 1 minus z. There is no volume factor which comes in over here. You are just looking at one energy level and that has a degeneracy eternal degrees of freedom which is usually the spin which gives you the degeneracy level g. Right? Similarly, I can take a look at the average this quantity, this quantity over here, the average occupation number which was nk as 1 over z inverse e to the power beta epsa k minus 1 and the total particle number was sum over k. This sum does not include the k equal to 0 value because that the value I have included over here. And I can take care of this way also over here z inverse e to the power beta epsa k minus 1 plus 1 by there is going to be a degeneracy factor of g one by z inverse minus one where I have set epsa k is equal to zero both here and here to get the last term. So this gives me sum over k one over z inverse e to the power beta epsa k minus one plus g z one minus z. Right. <coughs> Now the question is why do we want to take care of this k equal to the zero momentum state special, right? We didn't do it for a fermionic system. Now for a fermionic system we are kind of saved by the Pauli exclusion principle. I'll explain to you why we have to do it over here. 
Now the idea is in order to go forward as we have seen that we convert this sum into an integral over the using the density of states. But that integral clearly ignores a zero momentum state because there is no, uh, no energy states lying at that particular value uh, and the value epsa equal to zero or in the neighborhood of epsa equal to zero. Therefore that is a problem. In a fermionic system, even if you have a large system which had a large uh, volume V and a cap uh, particle number L, all the exclusion principle would tell you that you can only have one particle in that energy level. So you are at most ignoring one out of n. But bosons do not have that. In bosons, for bosonic particles, <coughs> more than one particle can go and sit at a given at any energy level. So therefore, if you are uh, if you do not have sufficient thermal excitation to excite the particles to higher excited levels, all of the particles would like to go and sit at the lower and lower energy levels. So if you keep on decreasing temperature, they are going to sit uh, go and sit at this energy level. So it can happen that a substantial number of particles are sitting at epsa k equal to zero, this the zero energy level, but your partition function as well as this expression does not take into that take that into account, right? Because your g epsa vanishes as epsa goes to zero. And it is therefore precisely that you have to take care of this very very carefully. So let's move forward. Ln q plus is minus the sum over k goes to integral g epsa d epsa and then I have ln 1 minus z e to the power minus beta epsa. Now we do not talk about uh, epsa subscript k g ln of 1 minus z. So let's see what was g epsa? g epsa was minus twice pi g v over h cube twice m raised to the power 3 half integral epsa. So we write down d epsa, epsa to the power half ln 1 minus z e to the power minus beta epsilon minus g ln of 1 minus z. <coughs> so this means minus 2 pi gv. We are now very very uh, familiar with how to handle such integrals. We do an integration by parts where we take the log as the first function so that this becomes ln 1 minus z e to the power minus beta epsilon and I have epsa to the power 3 half divided by 3 half minus integral d epsa epsa to the power 3 half divided by 3 half and then I have derivative of the law this function with respect to epsilon so I have 1 minus z e to the power minus beta epsilon minus z e to the power minus beta epsilon and then del d epsa of minus beta epsa we close the bracket over here so that this becomes twice pi gv over h cube twice m raised to the power 3 half. This vanishes between 0 and infinity. I don't have to worry about it. <coughs> this is minus integral d epsa epsa to the power 3 half divided by 3 half minus z e to the power minus beta epsa 1 minus z e to the power minus beta epsa and then dd epsa of minus beta epsa is just minus beta. So that this minus and this minus gives you a plus and this minus and this minus gives you a plus so that you have 2 pi gv over h cube twice m raised to the power 3 by 2. I have this as 2 by 3 and the beta I bring outside 2 by 3 beta and then I have 
integral d epsa let's put the limits so that we don't miss anything later on i have epsa to the power 3 half i have z e to the power minus beta epsa 1 minus z e to the power minus beta epsa our final simplification 2 by 3 beta 0 to infinity d epsa is epsa to the power 3 half divided by z inverse e to the power beta epsa minus 1. Now do not forget that I also have this term. So I have a minus g ln minus 1 minus z which is being carried forward. Right? <coughs> I can also be a little bit more smart. I can substitute x equal to beta epsa and I can rewrite this expression as twice m raised to the power 3 half 2 by 3 beta. This is beta to the power 3 half and I have 1 over beta to the power 3 half 1 over beta beta times epsa so that I have beta to the power minus 5 half, a 3 half that comes from over here and the beta alone comes from over here and I have 0 to infinity dx, x to the power 3 half divided by z inverse e to the power x minus 1 minus g ln of 1 minus z. Sorry. Let's write down. This is my can grand canonical partition function for a bosonic ideal Bose gas. Well, now this is the part which looks extremely complicated. Let's see, can we see whether this gives us something interesting? Because see, the whole description or derivation of this the canonical partition function essentially has started from the fact that this integral I can convert it into d epsa g epsa and the idea was that when we did the fermionic system we did it in a slightly different way we essentially wrote this as in terms of dk itself times some function I think it was uh, 2 pi to the power half lambda t times uh, k right so yeah so x was beta h bar square k square over twice m and so that x k was 2 pi half raised to the power uh, but divided by lambda t times x something like this was there and we had used uh, this particular approach now I said that both of them are identical, you are going to get the same thing. I have just used different approaches for the two different cases so that you are familiar with both of them, how you want to proceed. Right? So now 2 pi gv over h cube twice m raised to the power 3 half 2 by 3, this gives you 1 over beta to the power 3 half. So here let's bring a 3 by 2 factorial divided by 3 by 2 factorial. So we will put it over here itself. I have a 3 by 2 factorial and I have a 3 by 2 factorial and the 3 by 2 factorial in the numerator I include over here this times 3 by 2 factorial. So the expression that I'm looking at is simply this. Now this quantity 3 by 2 factorial is 3 by 4 square root pi so that I have 2 pi gv over h cube twice m 3 by 2 2 by 3 3 by 4 square root pi 
1 over beta to the power 3 half. So you should already get a feeling where we are going. So this should be, now let's cancel. The cancellation is 3, 3 gets cancelled. This gives you 2 and this gives you 2. Remember this is 2m raised to the power 3 half. Okay. So these 2 and these 2 cancels with the 4 and this pi and this square root pi gives you a pi to the power 3 half. So that which couples with this 2m raised to the power 3 half to give you gv 2m pi raised to the power 3 half and then I have this beta to the power 3 half and I have h cube which I can easily include as beta h square. And if you remember your de Broglie wavelength which was beta h square over 2m pi half then this quantity is gv over lambda t which was exactly the prefactor we had when we looked at Fermi integrals or fermionic systems. So my partition function becomes ln q plus is gv over lambda t integral dx 0 to infinity 1 over 3 half factorial x to the power 3 half z inverse e to the power x minus 1 minus g ln of 1 minus z. Now clearly this is the part this is the part which looks very very familiar and if you recall fm eta of z was 1 over m minus 1 factorial 0 to infinity dx x to the power m minus 1 z inverse e to the power x minus 1. This is was how we had defined the function and therefore <coughs> this is f of 5 half plus z. So your grand canonical function takes the form gv over lambda t f 5 half plus z minus g of 1 minus z. Right? <coughs> Average expectation number was 1 over z inverse e to the power beta epsilon k minus 1 and we separated the zero momentum state out so that we have z inverse e to the power beta epsilon k minus 1 plus g z 1 minus z. This means that if I go to the continuum limit I have 0 to infinity g epsilon d so one has to first write down the measure d epsa g epsa 1 over z inverse e to the power beta epsa minus 1 plus g z 1 minus z. This again is 2 pi g v over h q twice m raised to the power 3 half 0 to infinity d epsa epsa to the power half 1 over z inverse e to the power beta epsa minus 1 plus gz 1 minus z right and i have 2 pi gv over h cube times twice m raised to the power 3 half I can again, I will again substitute x equal to beta epsa here so that d epsa is 1 by beta dx and epsa is x over beta so that I have beta to the power 3 half and then I have 0 to infinity 
dx x to the power half z inverse e to the power x minus 1 plus gz 1 minus z. One needs to look at this factor over here again and I mean this is just a repetition of what we did earlier but let's just do it very quickly multiply and divide throughout by half factorial so that you will have this particular quantity will give you 2 pi gv over h cube twice m raised to the power 3 half square root pi over beta to the power 3 half so this has to be square root pi by 2 which is gv the pi and square root pi will go inside over here to give you 2m pi raised to the power 3 half h cube and beta to the power 3 half can be combined to give you beta h square so that you have gv over lambda t so this total particle number then becomes gv over lambda t and this integral is very very familiar to me in the sense i know that we use a this thing for m equal to half sorry m equal to 3 half and therefore i have f of 3 half plus of z minus sorry plus g of z 1 minus z.